Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about um, the uh, the Democrat Party, the American politics. We're going to talk about the Amer- the Democrat Party, and if it has any hope of fixing any of the problems it identified um, over the next four years, if it has any hope of learning uh, of. Actually, there's no question. It's absolutely the Democrat Party. Democrats in America are definitely learning lessons. They're learning what they need to fix, right? Um, but can they fix it, right? And I think there's a possibility they can. It's just too embedded, right? And so I'm going to give you a perfect example of this. So first of all, uh, Slate Political Gap Fest. You guys have heard me talk about them before. Best in the game. I absolutely, They're the gold content. I listen to them. I've been listening to them for coming up on like 20 years. Like they, the, the Slate Political Gap, Gap, Gap Fest is pretty much the same age as podcasts themselves. It was one of the first podcasts. It's one of the most successful podcasts. It is my gold content every week. I love these guys. Okay. But um, because they're brilliant and they're entertaining and uh, and it's the perfect morsel of information. It's the per you know it's a perfect length. It's a perfect frequency. I just love it on so many levels. But there's a there's a sense of hopelessness in 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 the example I'm about to give you that is just astonishing and may point to if you look at the evidence in this example, it may be there may be no way for the Democrats to fix their problem right. So, uh, slave political gap press, they, they get it in, they get in and they're chopping it up. They're like, what, what went wrong, man? You know, and I've been eating this stuff with a spoon all week, right? I, I love listening to Democrats, like take their lumps and do these autopsies, you know, these political autopsies on their own party. Um, you know, and, it, and, and actually that's literally the language they used in the podcast. They were like, we're doing an autopsy, right? It's, you know, cause a lot of people are like, Democrats might be dead, right? Like I, do, I definitely think they're, you know, I think they're dead on the floor, but that doesn't mean they can't be defibrillated, right? Um, it, it's bad. But let's, listen to this example, okay? So Emily Bazelon, absolutely brilliant um, host, right? She, she literally, I think she, I think her degree is from Harvard, and she now literally teaches at Yale, right? Absolute genius. She's a lawyer. She's a writer. She's a speaker. She's literally brilliant, right? Okay. So she says, well, I read this great piece from this guy. And he said, essentially, the Democrat Party right now is HR. This long list of rules that you can't break. And coming into the room and saying, hey, everybody, here's here's the update on the rules you can't break. Right? And even when it's delivered with the most, you know, just most in the best possible way, it just seems hectoring and scolding and the opposite of fun, a meeting no one wants to go to, you know, it was like, oh, I'm up for this HR meeting, you know, and so she, she was literally saying, I've been reading about how our party has these purity tests and right, and uh, John Dickerson gets in and they're all talking about it and then John Dickerson was saying, you know, we have all these purity tests, right? And there's a big question now, are we the party of purity tests, right? And then John John Dickerson doubled down and he said, and I think a lot of people are, are looking at our party right now and saying, oh my gosh, you know, we are a lot more concerned about rooting out heretics in our own party than we are about getting any converts, right? And are we getting a single convert? If you look at these numbers last week, doesn't seem like we are getting any converts, right? Looks like we're getting roasted, right? Like that that the converts are all on the Republican side, but we're 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 getting we're rooting out our our heretics, right? You know, people who aren't passing the purity tests, right? Making sure that our 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 ranks are clean of the of the undeserving, of the unworthy, right? Is is really incredible, right? So then David Plotz, first of all, he you know they have a structure in the in the in the podcast. And David Plotz is the guy that falls on his sword a lot and says something outlandish and, you know, kind of pushes, like, pushes the envelope to make the podcast interesting. And it is. This is why it's my gold content every single week. It's it's peerless. It is literally the best podcast 
that's ever existed in my humble opinion. I've been listening to it for no less than 17 years, I don't think, right? It's coming up on two decades, right? I've seen these guys live. I love it, right? But uh, so David Plotz comes in. He goes, yeah, yeah, you know, to know, I knew today we'd have to talk about, you know, Trump's plan to mass de deportation. And so I said to myself, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, so wait. Um, so he's going to deport all these illegal immigrants or illegal aliens. And then I realized, oh, wait, wait, that's wrong. It's got to be. Um, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You can check it out for yourself. But this is I really believe this is the gist of what they were saying. Right. And he's like, uh, you know, and then I was like, oh, wait, I have to say undocumented. And can I even say immigrant? Do I just say peer person? And, you know, and and then it was astonishing. Um, Emily jumps in and says, well, it's really problematic to talk about a person as being illegal. People aren't illegal. All right. So this is OK. This is the part you have to understand. Right. She, this is a woman who, who teaches at Yale who just read an article about hectoring and scolding and how it was destroying the party, right? Like, you know, David Plotz is from Harvard, right? Like, does she think for one second he hadn't heard that you shouldn't word, use the word illegal, right? Like, he of course had heard that, but also the reason why it's in his head is we're talking about people who came over illegally, right? Like, you know, we're talking about immigra immigrants who are coming over the border illegally. That's the entire, like, that's the group that Trump wants to deport, right? And, and you know, and so what blew me away is if a woman, for, so you have this situation and, you, and again, there was just gigantic gender gap, right? And here's a man saying the wrong word and a woman coming in and scolding him, right? And what blew me away was she knew, she knew that this was exactly why they got, they just got roasted. She just read an article saying, we are scolding and hectoring people to the point where no one wants to come to our party, right? There's no, like, literally party. There's no party here. It's just hectoring and scolding and rooting out the heretic on language. Right. And so she knew it. She had just read it. She's from Harvard. She's absolutely brilliant. She could not stop herself, could not stop herself from hectoring and scolding David. Right. And so my point is, if Emily Blatt Bazelon, writer, champion, you know, Wonder Woman, man, super brilliant, smart reader woman cannot stop this. How on earth is anybody else going to be able to do it, right? It's, it's you know, I love politics. There are certain things I absolutely love, right? But this is the Democrats' pudding, right? This is their chocolate pudding. They cannot stop from going back to the tub and getting another scoop, right? I think she, you know, I think it's what feeds her soul is to hector and scold others about language, Right. It's like what she lives for. Right. It's so like even having read that this is what cost them the election. She could not stop. She could not stop. And this is not this is somebody who is brilliant. Right. Who has control of herself generally. Right. Who is highly independent. Right. Has agency. She could not stop herself. Right. And, you know, and all of them kind of had a little bit of a chuckle realizing she had 100% proven everything they had talked about, right? The purity test, the rooting out the heretic, the scolding and hectoring on language, right? And, and you know, like, the, she knows him, right? And still she could not stop herself from going around the mulberry bush again astounding. So, and, and I really think the Democrats may be in a lot of trouble. And the reason why is I listen to this podcast called the wilderness. You guys got to check it out from 2020. And it was a breakdown. Uh, it was, it was a breakdown of, what was it again? Uh, it was, it was a breakdown of 
the first time the Dems got beat, right? And um, and what it took, right? And what it would take to win, right? And man, oh man, it broke down. It, it, it was just a systematic breakdown of these are the things we're doing wrong, right? And it laid a roadmap. One of the biggest things was that uh, they came out and they said, we have been supporting a group that is 3% of America, but we give them everything. They're first in line all the time, right? And we're losing 30% of the vote from it, right? And it was just like, and it was a complete roadmap, but none of it was changed. None of it was fixed, right? It was it was astounding, right? So, so just because the Dems are actually figuring out what they did wrong, does not mean for one second that they will have the wherewithal to change any of it, any of it, right? Now, does that mean that Democrats are going away? Not overnight. They they definitely are on the road to destruction. No two way as a party. But it will take a lot more than four years, right? Because they're because they've been they've been built up for 150, right? So, and man, oh man, tradition and momentum are stronger than you expect. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. Nothing more, nothing less. The important part is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider like subscribing and have a fetch millennium.